All right, guys, so it's almost summertime. It's almost June. I can't freaking wait. I'm done with this winter cold rain. I've been done with it for like two months. Anyway, uh, so during your adventures, camping, hiking, um, the beach, you know, or just, I keep this in my truck just so I can have it whenever I need it. And uh, with, this is basically a trauma kit. This is not... Um, gonna have band-aids in it it's not gonna have neosporin in it it's, it's not gonna have you know your typical like I scraped my knee on a rock you know this stuff this all everything in here is basically for gunshots stab wounds um, I don't have a compression needle in here because I, I don't have the training in it and I'm not gonna rely on somebody having the training in it you know because if you have it and somebody says it and they do it wrong it's like you want to be that guy you can kill somebody with a uh, a compression needle so once I learn how to do it then um, I'll, I'll get one and put it in here <clears throat> but if you don't know a compression needle is a it's like a four gauge needle you stick at like about this first rib I believe it is or in between the first and like right it's got to be in the perfect area on whatever side the tension hemothorax is and that's basically your lung uh, filling up with fluid and you can't the person can't breathe and you have to release that pressure inside or you know they can uh, go into shock or other other things so anyway um like I said I'm not that's just like out of the what I know about it off the top of my head I'm not trained in in that and I'm not a medical professional in any shape or form I do have 10 hours of training with a tourniquet and like wound packing and chest seal. I did a little trauma class up in uh, where I live. A uh, little EMT uh, medical paramedics held a little class. I went to it. It was pretty neat. I suggest everyone does that because anymore, I mean, you got these active shooters. You got people just walking in. There. It just happened around here. It was a guy. He walked into the store to shoot his, to kill his wife with an AK. 40, or might have had an AR-15, but he just walked right into Wawa and shot her like five times. I mean, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? So I keep this in the truck at all times. Like, always it's in the truck. I carry, I used to carry like um, a rat's tourniquet in my backpack, but um, it's been, pr there, a lot of guys are finding out now that the rat's tourniquets are no good, so I just stay with the cat, the Gen 7, um, and you're going to see that on the outside. So this is the new VanQuest um, smaller trauma pack, and um, it's actually let me fix this focus. This this fucking camera, dudes. I'm telling you, like I watched Wrangler Star's video the other day. He has a new camera, and I'm just about ready to be done with the M50 because the autofocus. It's just a kind of a pain in the ass. It only focuses on your face, and when you're trying to hold something, it just it won't get it. Um, cause it's on my face and then you got to change the focus to, you know, the, where it's in one area. It's just, it's a pain in the ass. It sucks in low lighting. The battery life sucks. I just, this camera drives me absolutely ballistic. All right. So that should have basically took care of that. Okay. See how it's, it's a lot better now because I have it focused on one area. It's not just in my face. Um, all right. So this is the new VanQuest. I, I forget the name of it. It's the smallest EDC or it's the smallest, um, trauma pack they make this is in red and wolf gray which is their new color scheme um i love it i absolutely love this color scheme for this i have the glow in the dark um symbol for medical on there uh what else is going on so on the outside you have a gen 7 cat tourniquet um now this this is something that a lot of people are going to argue about the gen 7 is not as the same as all the other gens it isn't the same. There's there's differences um, as far as like the buckle. Uh, there's something else. The I think the windmill is a little bit different, and it just has like these little features that are, are different and upgraded. It's it is a little bit different than the Gen Six, um, but they still work. If you have a Gen Six, it's not like throw it away to buy a Gen Seven, um, but they are a little bit different. Also, I said this in a lot of my other uh, medical videos and trauma kit videos. If you're not paying $25 or more for one of these, it's fake, all right? And that's 100%. Do not get the fake ones, the knockoff ones, because what's going to happen is 
you're going to put that on, you're going to tighten it, and you're going to start turning it, and you're going to have to turn that thing 20 times before it's even thinking about cutting an otter, and by then it probably doesn't turn anymore because it's a piece of crap, or this is not high quality, pla um, durable plastic that's just going to snap. Um, you know, there's just things about them. The, those $20, 19 you see like a kit of four of them for 20 bucks. Do not buy them. These are $30, okay? Um, sometimes you can catch them on sale. The Gen 6s might be like 25 or whatever, but if you're paying 25 or less for one of these, unless you're buying it and you know for a fact that it's a used, well, if it's used, it's garbage, but you know, like somebody had it and they want to sell it to you or something, like a flea market or something like that, and you know it's real and they might be selling it for a deal, fine. But like other than that, uh, the brand new ones that you're gonna get, they're 30 bucks, 25 to 30 dollars. Uh, so keep that in mind. This thing, if I crank this on my arm, okay, if I have it, I usually have it preset. My orange one that is in my, uh, my, my little pack that sometimes I sling around that's always with me, it's either in my backpack or in my, uh, or just with me. Like if I don't have to have my backpack with me or whatever, that's always with me no matter what. The, the orange Gen 7 that's in that um, is, the, or, the orange Gen 7 that's in that is 100%, uh, it's already preset to, just so I can put it on real quick. So anyway, you're, you're putting this thing on, right? You gotta make sure, and like this, see that I have this thing not set. Like you don't want that in a way, you want this to be a quick process. So what I usually do is I just kind of, and this is your time stamp, this is where you're going to write the time that you applied the tourniquet on, okay, because that matters. Um, the doctors have to know how long it's been since it's on. So by preset, I mean you already have it preset so you can just put it on your arm or your leg or whatever. Uh, I would have it fit, what's the thickest part? Probably your thigh. So have it preset for your thigh because you can always just adjust it quickly for your arm. So this thing, guys, once it's set, you're going to crank this thing like, it's already getting tight and uh, uh you know a couple times and it's gonna cut off it's gonna cut off like I can't turn it no more so I mean I could and you would want to you would want to really crank it and it hurts you know I'm not trying to get hurt right now I gotta go to the gym still but um it should hurt so like a lot of people you know they're gonna when, when it's when it's a slice wound artery and they're gushing blood and you're cranking this thing on them, they're gonna be in pain. So you gotta be uh, aware of that. It's not gonna be something that it's gonna feel relief. Um, it's gonna hurt, it's meant to hurt, it's meant to pinch the artery against the bone, it's meant to stop blood, and that's, number one people, most people die in an in a active shooter because they bleed out. All you got, if you can stop the bleeding, you're gonna stop somebody from dying. That's mainly what that is. So that's what all of this is. This is a stop bleeding kit. Pretty much, that's basically what this is. I'm not gonna pull these out, these are just trauma shears, um, and I have them looped on this little Velcro thing that comes with the VanQuest, this little kit. So it's like a little, just a little, so it doesn't slide out of there, it's pretty genius actually. And um, so this thing is also, it'll molly onto your backpack or your belt or whatever, however you wanna do it, um, it'll it'll molly on there. It's also It also came in one of those little keepers over here. Um, so this is meant to be a quick release thing. So, <clears throat> you know, I have this thing in my truck or whatever. Uh, say, you know, I get in a bad accident, something happens, I slice my arm on my on a piece of glass that comes through. I don't know. Use your imagination. There's a million different things. You don't get to pick and choose what happens. Things just go bad. You know what I mean? So it's better to have it and, and not need it and need it and not have it with this kind of thing so um but this is meant for to be able to open with one hand quickly and just deploy it boom this thing's ready to go so the first thing on the uh, that i keep in here is um some nra emergency trauma dressing all right so that's what this is from uh, nra means north american rescue uh and that's where you're going to get a lot of this stuff or from uh medical uh skinny medic just go to um I think it's shopskinnymedic.com or oh Medical Gear Outfitters. So yeah, go check them out. You're not gonna find any knockoff tourniquets there or anything like that. You might even find the new cut tourniquets that guys are using, like the Sams and the Soft Tees. I keep a Soft Tee at work all the time. Uh, in the workplace, they had this um, active shooter brochure they passed out, and I'm like, this is bullshit. I'm like, what if what happens if someone actually 
actually does come in here with a gun and starts shooting people, how are we prepared then? There's no tourniquets in this place. There's no chest seals in this place. There's no one knows how to do it besides me. And one guy goes, well, I'm coming down your shop. You have tourniquets. I said, you're going to be dead. You, ha you don't have the time to come to my shop. I'm on the other side of the plant. Get your own freaking tourniquet. Learn it yourself. Um, so, and no, no, like not to be a dick, but like seriously, like wake up, dude. You're not going to have time to come to my shop and go, I need your tourniquet and then go back. Like the person's going to be bled out dead. You have like, what, a minute? I mean, the arteries less than that, 90 seconds. I mean, I think that's what it is. I'm a little bit rusty. I need to go back to a class. But so I'll tell you a quick story. Um, the reason why I got into all this, and a lot of people ask me, like, why do you even do this? So I had a dog. Uh, his name was Angel. Okay, and um, this tattoo's for him. I attempted to show it to you, but I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. So Angel uh, got out of the house. Long story short, he was stabbed in his throat and he bled out and died. Well, he lost. He didn't. He they had to put him down at the hospital. The dog was a freaking soldier, and uh, an ambulance did come and wrap his neck up with trauma dressing right here this stuff right here but nobody was smart enough to hold the wound you know what i mean they just put him in the back of a truck and drove him to the animal hospital i wasn't there i would have held pressure but nobody there either gave a shit or knew and that it took a while it didn't happen overnight but slowly i as i started being a uh, more of a mature adult and more responsible for you know, things that I do and YouTube helped a lot with that because I realized like that I'm influencing people now. So I have to really be on point and it's really helped me develop because of you guys. So anyway, um, it took a little while, maybe a few years and I started getting into the medical thing. I'm like, I need to get trained. So with this and this right here, these two items right here, my dog would have survived. What you would have did with this was wound pack the knife wound in the neck. Wound pack and wound pack and wound pack and wrap this around the neck and hold pressure. The dog probably would have lost a little bit of blood. He would be alive. No doubt in my mind. The dog would have lived with these two things right here. So it just doesn't have to be about human casualty. It doesn't have to be. It could be your pet. And my dog now, Storm, super important to me. And I worry about it all the time. She's a pit bull. People give her the stink eye. You know, Angel is a pit bull. He got out of the house. Somebody didn't like how supposedly he was attacking his dog, which wasn't true because there was no marks on his dog. And if Angel was to attack your little Jack Russell, he would have been no offense or anything to people with small dogs. But Angel was a 65 pound pit bull. He would have ripped in the shreds. There wasn't a mark on this dog. And even the police said that. So it's like, well, if he was attacking your dog, then how is he still alive? This dog's huge. So um, anyway, uh, it does that. I know what can happen. And uh, how things can just go bad sometimes. But mainly what I carry this for is because I try to think. Like try to think in your head. Like what is the most. What's, what's going to really go. What could really go wrong. And for me it's car accidents. I must in my lifetime. I've actually. I'll tell you another quick story. Um, when I was a little after high school. I was driving down street road. And he heading up to 2nd street pike. And two kids in a. Oh man, had it been like a 97 uh, Ford, like what was it an Escort? I believe it was a blue Ford Escort two-door. And uh, these two kids t got T-boned by a pickup truck, drunk driver, and um, they were stuck in the car. And I helped them both get out. Um, I know now that I should, I could have did that differently, but I just wanted to help them get out of the car then. Now I know that, you know, and also I was, for, for how I was at that point in my life, I was, I kind of amazed myself now that when I think about it, that I could have, um, that I did it right. Like I asked if they were hurt, does anything hurt first before I grab, like you got to get out of the car. I couldn't get out of the car. I'm like ripping the door open from the outside because I was a body and tech, actually, did I get a pry tool out of the car? I did. So I had, a, um, I always keep a big crowbar in my truck, my car, whatever. I'm going to do a truck EDC very soon because Miss Nasal's out there. We're going to start. We're going to do the truck EDC. Uh, and I'll show you guys what I keep in my truck. It's pretty much the same thing I kept in my car. Um, I always keep a big pry bar, crowbar just for that reason. And I had one in my car, not for that reason at that stage of my life, but I had one in my car anyway. And I got the door open. I popped the door open and I got them out. And, um,. Probably wouldn't have made much of a difference. The car wasn't on fire or nothing, but it made me feel good that um, excuse me, 
that I could, that I did that. And uh, I, I like to think back on that now, like, okay, you know, I have it in me to do something like that. So I think I, I think I should, you know, and this is why I am how I am now. So I keep this in my car mainly for car accidents. I've pulled up on numerous amounts of car accidents in my lifetime. Um, so you have this, this is a car accident item that's very critical. Um, this is a nasal passage and the lube is taped to the back here. The, what this is gonna be for, so if somebody can't breathe out of their mouth or their nose and you're gonna stick this in their nose and they're gonna be able to breathe. Um, say somebody gets their, they hit their face against the steering wheel and they break their nose into their face and their face is mushed. This is a realistic thing that can happen. I know it sounds gross and I know it's, you know, it is what it is, but like, this is this will save someone's life. They can die from that. So um, if they can't breathe, they can't get air into their lung, then they can't they can't live. You need oxygen to live. It's like you know. So one of those things. Uh, I do keep some gloves here. They're not vital for a trauma situation. If you have time, which you probably won't, put them on. But uh, other than that, they're just there for just there. I mean, you're not going to really have time. You can also make a chest seal with this if you have tape, which I don't in here. Um, but you can, you can plug a tire with glove too, but skinny medic, skinny medic put a post up the other day about he had a, a nail on his tire. He goes, guess I got to go to the tire shop. And I wrote in the comments, I said, you can plug a gunshot wound, but you can't plug a tire. So, um, also NRA gauze is going to be for a gunshot wound or a stab wound more or less. Maybe the gunshot went in and out. You can wound pack with it and use these chest seals. Um, actually you don't want to use, you, you basically going to wound pack for a stab wound. Um, you're not going to want to wound pack a gunshot wound because what, what, what can, and if it's an in and out gunshot wound, you're just going to use a chest seal. Uh, okay. If, or uh, just, um, apply pressure and tape, you know what I mean? And just try to hold it because it's if a stomach shot, they got a half hour by just bleeding out without holding it, you know what I mean? So depending on where it is in the abdomen, uh, if, there, if it's an in and out gunshot, or if it's a gunshot that's in and doesn't go, you're not gonna want a wound pack. That's gonna be bad, okay? Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna put pressure onto the bullet and that then you can really, you can hurt someone really bad. So you, that's why you have to really be careful. And like I said, I'm not even a medical professional. I just feel like that just doesn't make sense, right? So um, the other thing uh, is an Israeli bandage. I keep this in there, and that's another thing. You know, you're gonna wrap arm. You can wrap abdomen with this if you're if you're if you did wound pack a stab wound to the abdomen, and um, you know, then you can wrap around with this. Um, and that would work or the trauma dressing you can that's what both of these are for it's just a lot of dressing that's going to go round and round and round um, the chest seals like again gunshot to the chest in and out boom or if it's just in any you can stick one that's fine uh, it's a Venet chest seals are the only ones I use uh, these are the ones that I trained with these are the ones that I'm comfortable with using you can also make an improvised chest seal out of the wrapper um, you know but that's another thing you need tape for. I do have duct tape in my backpack, like tape. I have tape wrapped around lighters. I have tape wrapped around uh, old gift cards. I have tape all over the place in my bag and in my truck and in, in, in things everywhere. So there's always going to be tape around just for this very reason. All right. So this would have saved the dog's life as well. An Israeli bandage. Oop, dropping everything. Uh, a Sharpie marker. This goes along with the timestamp. On, uh, if you're whatever you're doing, you, you know, you can write the timestamp on the person's forehead. It doesn't matter. Just get the damn time on them somewhere. If I drop another thing. <laughs> uh, and guys, in the comments, if you're more um, than welcome to put your medical experiences in, your stories, uh, what you're carrying, and as far as medical, if you don't, if, you're, if this video helped you, or, you know, if I said something that's wrong, please correct me. That's fine. I can accept that. Just no reason to be ignorant and rude about it. Like I said, I'm not a medical prof uh, professional. I'm just a regular citizen. I'm trying to learn things as, and, and help people as best as I can. I only have in here what I can handle at the moment. Like I don't have chest, uh, chest needle in here, nothing like that. You know, there's not like uh, I don't know how to use... Um, What's, there's other things I don't know how to do. So I just have what I can handle and what I know I can do. So um, it's not over the top, I don't think. The only other thing in here is just some gauze. Fine. And that's it. Just And that's just going to be a little... It, this gauze in a trauma situation is probably not going to help for anything. So I, I don't even know why it's in there. But 
Um, so that's it, guys. That's pretty much what I keep in my little personal trauma kit. This, this is a personal trauma kit. This is mainly built for me. But at the same time, I'm not going to say, oh, that's mine. I can't use this on this person that needs it. You know what I mean? So uh, this is uh, really cool. Like I said, it's the VanQuest. It's the smallest version in red. And I packed a, a good amount of gear in here. This is something I'm going to keep with me. It's going to go in my bag when I'm going hiking. It's going to go to me in my beach bag, which I'm getting ready to do a beach video. So stuff you should bring with you to the beach. You should 130,000% bring a trauma kit with you everywhere you go. Now, I'm not talking about have the thing strapped to your belt. But like if you go to a concert venue or if you're going to a concert right, or a music festival, uh, I keep this in my backpack at a music festival. Seriously. I went to Firefly last year. The lady pulled this out. She would not let me bring my scissors in. Okay, I, I lost a pair of trauma shears. That's why you're seeing these black ones. I was not allowed to bring the trauma shears in. Okay, but I was allowed to bring everything else in. And uh, that was cool. I just kept it in my backpack. I used my... This is more or less my summertime beach uh, music festival beach bag. And it's a really thin bag, which is good for crowds. But I just basically stuck my trauma kit in here, a rain jacket, a flashlight, and some water, and I was good to go at any music festival. So it was really cool to have that um, set up, and it was really cool that they allowed me to bring that in. She goes, what is that? And I go, that's a trauma kit. You know, they can't stop. They cannot, you're not going to tell somebody, oh, you can't bring that in. Now, if you're going to a concert, you might, you know, okay. You might not want to bring this into a concert, but like, you know, just know your exits, know, know how to get out of there. This active shooter stuff, all this stuff is real. You know what I mean? It's, it's a scary world we live in. Um, as far as the beach goes, you could throw this thing in your beach bag, throw it in your lady's purse. They carry a big purses. And honestly, if you're a man and you don't have some kind of EDC bag or satchel or whatever with gear in it to take care of your family, your loved ones, yourself, or just get out of a bad situation, you know, I got to really question your, your, uh, your manhood. Do I? Do I have to question your manhood? Not saying, you know, the bag makes you a man. Oh, I carry a bag. I'm a freaking man now. You know, it's about the training. It's about how you go about life. And, and I said this a million times. It's not about the gear you carry, the gun you have. That doesn't make you a man. It doesn't make you macho. It doesn't make you cool. It just, it's just about being prepared. It's just about protecting and helping other people who are less inclined to learn these things so anyway i hope you guys enjoy the video i'm gonna wrap this one up um like share subscribe give me a thumbs up if you haven't already i really really appreciate the thumbs up so you have no idea because youtube puts it into a better algorithm the more views i get the more i can do cool shit uh, i'm gonna do cool shit anyway but like you know i can't believe that there's three thousand people here at this point i i just really can't believe it thank you guys so much i love you all peace I, I just slipped. I slipped, guys. I slipped trying to shut the camera off, and I, this was on the floor. It says soundproofing, and I slipped on it.